Welcome to Navarero's online showcase video, MIA edition. Today we are back at the wheat farm again. And this is because I've done quite a bit of work in between episodes. So today I would like to talk to you guys about the seed pellets, my overall plans for this industry and how I want to handle the supply runs from here to the cattle farm. And also problems that the that have come up my potential solution for that. So basically me working around a bug again and potentially even doing a supply run towards the cattle farm at the end of the video because really the train that I assembled to deal with um, this cargo here, it's been filled up. I would have liked uh, um, doing this on the episode as well. Just doing the whole uh, loading procedure because it's now so much more convenient and I like showing that off. But yeah, that was also where I ran into the bug and trying to figure out a workaround wasn't that easy and it would have been way too tedious and weird for the episode. So let's get into it. Let's start by talking about the seed pellets. And the thing is with my overall plan, this is already tying in with everything else. So kind of start somewhere, but it's all interconnected. The reason for the interconnection is that I found out that it would be the easiest thing if I was to handle the seed pellet resupply with the same train as I do the cattle supply run. The reason is first up the cattle farm and the freight depot are very close together especially compared to where my um, cattle farm is over here. So yeah, it would be a waste going over to the cattle farm to deliver the supplies, then come back here and then later send another train to do the um, uh, supply run for the wheat farm itself. It's much easier and better just doing everything in one single uh, round trip. I mean, it's maybe not even easier, but it's much more elegant. That's the word I was looking for. So yeah, I want to do everything in a combined fashion. I think that's going to be much better in the end. Another pro for this uh, strategy right now is that, well, the seed pellets need the same type of car to be transported as the grain. So I already have the right uh, type of car on my train to begin with. And yeah, why not use it? So since the last episode, I've also taken care of assembling the train, which we are going to see in a moment. But I also done a supply run here, so we now have some output product. So yeah, it's been producing. Let's take a look at the train, which once again is fully loaded. And yeah, let's take a look at what we have right here. I came up with the idea of having uh, 60 straw bears and 60 ton of grain to be transported at a single time. And this is for multiple reasons once again. And yeah, this is the entire train without the engine. Currently in storage in uh, an engine shed, we are going to get that towards the end of the video. The reason why I wanted to have 60 of each is because that works out pretty well with the cars. To transport 60 tons of grain, I need five uh, box cars and can fully load them. To transport 60 straw bales, I need four bulkhead cars and once again fully loaded, all works out, pretty neat ratio. And the more important thing than this even is that of course the output from the wheat farm happens at the same ratio, so one ton of grain for one straw bale. And the cattle farm also basically needs it at the same ratio. To be fair and to be clear, it's five to five, so five ton of grain to five straw bales, but in the end, it's basically still a one-to-one -one ratio, just a bit more at a time. Or is it 10 to 10? I don't know, but it's definitely the same in terms of uh, ratio, how, it, how much it needs of every single item. So that's all pretty good, working out pretty neatly, and this is making this entire thing once again, really elegant to deal with. Now let's get into the read of things in terms of the actual problems that I've been facing. And for that, we need to take a look at the wiki, or more accurately, the in-game database. 
and take a look at the wheat farm page here. So my idea in addition to what we have right now is that if I always want to get 60 grain and 60 straw bale, it would be kind of useful to just get the exact amount of supplies for um, this stuff as well. And since I need uh, two seed pellets and two water to get one grain and one straw bale on medium industry difficulty. I mean, the easiest thing would be to get 120 seed pellets and 120 water. So that would be really neat, but yeah, now to the actual problem. And this is once again the bug that I've been going on and on about for I don't know how many months at this point. It is the dual output industry loading or production bug, which the team has tried to address in a um, in a patch in the past, like at the beginning of this year, sometime around that, and they then noticed that yeah, their proposed solution was worse than the problem. So they then tried to sell off the problem as a fix, and since then we have been dealing with this. So the problem right now is, yeah, if I load up my outputs here, if everything is full on the grain and straw bale side and there are still items on the input side left over, I cannot load everything perfectly simultaneously. And if I load up uh, one car at a time, let's say with the grain, I'm going to drain out how much there is in the silo over here. And then the industry is gonna spring back into action because there's now an a not full uh, output side here. And yeah, it's going to take two seed pellets, two water and give me one more grain for that. And since I should usually be getting one grain and one straw well, I'm basically missing out on what I could get for the entire supply. I'm only getting half of the output. About a year ago or something like that, if in the exact same situation, one output is full, the other one would be doubled up with what it gets. And that still would allow you to get the exact same input ratio or input output ratio in terms of what you get overall. So I would be loading up all of my box cars with a grain. And at some point this would be full again. And when I move on to the bulkhead cars to load them with straw bales, I would then if there's still stuff on the input side, I would then still be getting twice as much of those as I would be otherwise. And meaning that at the end of it, I would get my 60 and 60 for 120 and 120. As it is right now, I might be getting 60 and 40, 45 or something for the full um, supplies. And yeah, having not the full output ratio of um, for the same inputs, depending on how you handle things, really annoying and I'm not happy with the workaround here. The workaround being that I could get a second shay, have one for the input side, one for the output. And basically what I would need to do is make sure that I under supply one of the input goods and only put in more of that, let's say the water here, as long as both of the output sides are somewhat empty. So I would need to run back and forth quite often. I would need to take care that both of the output sides can accept stuff before I add any more on the input and I need to make sure to never fill up the outputs and it's not fun. It simply isn't fun dealing with it like that. So for the time being, I've basically just swapped it over to easy difficulty to still get my fill of everything. And yeah, that's how I've been going about the entire thing here. <coughs> when it comes to the supply trains for the um, uh, wheat farm here, my first supply for the water was basically 144 tons. So I would need to cut down two cars in order to get the 120 tons that I want here. 
if everything else is working out. That would maybe be a bit weird for my other um, industry where for the water wells, but yeah, cutting away two cars is maybe a bit awkward there, but it's nothing that I cannot deal with. And with me delivering 60 tons of grain and 60 straw bales to the cattle farm, I'm pretty sure that it needs twice as much water as the rest of the items, so that would also work out with 120. Let me just double check. Yeah, 5 grain, 5 straw bale, but, but uh, 10 water. So if I deliver 60 and 60, I would need 120, so that would also be good for that farm. And the, um, uh, the other industry that needs water, the stamp mill, is basically just taking whatever I can get, so that doesn't really matter at all. But yeah, this side would be easy to take care of. The um, seed pellets are a bit more of a problem. So let's get back to the train for this one. I don't know if I explicitly mentioned this before, but there is a reason why some of these car are, why some of these boxcars are a different color, and why some of them are loaded and some of them aren't. So the five ones in front here with a darker red or slightly brownish one, I don't know. It's it's a dark red, I'm pretty sure. Again, I'm a bit colorblind. So I'm never really too sure about the exact color. Anyways, we've, these five cars here, they are fully loaded with grain. And these ones are all empty right now. And this is because, once again, I need twice the amount of, um, of seed pellets as I need grain. And therefore I need more box cars in order to load the grain pellets. So yeah, in the end, once I come back, everything here is going to be loaded with um, seed pellets. And it's actually going to be slightly overloaded. So for the 60 tons of seeds, that, or for the 60 tons of grain, I'm, I know I'm mixing up the words, I'm sorry. For the 60 tons of grain, I need five box cars. That's working out exactly. The thing is, we have 12 tons capacity per box car over here. Oh, that's part of the error there. But if I load the seed pellets, it's gonna load 14 of them. Meaning that in these five cars, there's gonna be 70 in total. I need 120. And there isn't really a good way of loading the last 50. So this is gonna be slightly more than that. I think I have like 56 with the four cars over here. I should only be loading 50, but otherwise I think my only other solution would be going with a huge amount of smaller cars and maybe even the open cars instead of the box cars and I don't really want that. I think I still have one full size box car and then it would be the, the regular flats from the smaller car collection. And maybe like six of them. So that would be really awkward. It would make the perfect ratio, but I don't want to deal with that. So yeah, I'm going to be slightly overloading on the um, seed pellets here. If anything, at the very end, if I was to do this entire dance for quite a few times, I would end up with um, input output being full for the, um, uh, for the seed pellets and some would just be left over in the end. And that would be how I'd handle that. But yeah, this is how this entire thing will be going. So yeah, let's do the whole supply run now. Besides all of that, there are a few more tracks over here and those are just to help out operations. And there's also now finally an engine shed. Had a hard time fitting it here because the terrain just drops off again and just making a huge foundation for what's supposed to be a really simple yard more like a budget thing, doesn't really look good, but I wanted a full-size engine shed here, so this is what I needed to do. And yeah, I finally brought a Eureka to the playthrough here. So this one is called the Grain Train, for obvious reasons, and yeah, I mean the Eureka, it cannot pull that much, it has a rather weak tract uh, tractive effort. 
but it's amongst the fastest engines on the um, or in the game, the cheapest fastest engine to be exact, and I thought it would be a really good fit here. So yeah, I'm gonna be heating this one up real quick, and then we're gonna get back into it. The thing is, I added a few more side tracks over here just to have a bit more storage. So for example for um, unloading all the stuff over here I'll likely mainly deal with um, this one as the one uh, where I run all the, um, uh, the empty tank cars on. But if I then have some loaded grain cars I would likely just put them onto this track here. And for the other one over here this is just for whatever cars we have loaded. The thing is I was actually considering the option of doubling up the output that I want. So instead of having 60 of each I would go with 120. I think it would be overloading the cattle farm a bit. Which I could be convinced about. I mean the major problem would be water because 240 water would be a lot to transport. But yeah, that could be fine, that could be arranged, it would be a bit more difficult. And the major problem is, I don't know if I could make it work getting just more space into this region. This is all pretty much at its limit already. I could maybe put this track a bit further over here and then have two sidings, one for, the, or for, one for some of the cars, the other for the rest. Not entirely sure if that would actually work out, but... Maybe I'll try it. Right now my more major problem is the whole input output thing for the farm itself. It would be so cool if I could make it work but once again the bug is gonna be very annoying. And I hate just having to work around so many things all the time. But yeah, anyways, let's get into the engine, let's get it out of here and see how well it does. Okay, we are already at uh, pressure, so that's nice. And it's not even losing anything, so the temperature is up enough. Uh, let me check. I hope I got everything set up here to go onto that siding. I mean, the more major concern is the freeway switch that I had to put in for this one. If that's not on the correct setting, then we are going to derail anyways, so you gotta be careful about that. But yeah, this is all working out. I I'm gonna do it on the map, trying to flip the switch over. But yeah, I want to use the Eureka anyways, it's one of the few engines that I didn't have on this playthrough yet. So this is working out pretty well. If I was to go to 120 units I might actually need to switch this out for something else. But overall, I mean at the amount of cars that we have right here, which I think is like 13 or something, shouldn't be something that uh, the engine can't handle and we are pretty much going across even ground anyways. There's some slight elevation change from uh, from over here to this place, but from that point on it's all pretty much even. So let's align the switches. Gonna go on to this side here, come through there. Come through over here, not go into the main yard, but instead bypass it. Going through a few wires. And up to the farm and that's actually all set up correctly. And I think this is the input side so we should be good to go here. I'm gonna still um, quickly save anyways just to make sure. Just in case something goes wrong I don't want to <laughs> have to fire everything up again. I mean Basically we have done almost nothing in this episode apart from talking, but yeah, I don't want to have to um, fire this up again, get it connected and then try again in hopes that it 
fits the second time. I could also maybe flip this one over so we're not going too close to the platform. Should all be clear anyways, but uh, yeah, just to be sure. Also, I should maybe check that I don't have any brakes pulled on the cars. Shouldn't be the case, but just to make sure. It's looking all pretty good. And yeah, even just assembling the train, I had some issues where um, some stuff didn't work out. Basically, uh, yeah, the railing, because some of the cars were still acting as if they, were, as if they are um, static objects. So shunting right now also isn't really fun. I was even considering at some point to continue this series in form of a PowerPoint presentation or so. I mean, listen, I made entire episodes reading through a text document or just presenting a graphic and explaining a particular mechanic, how it should work. I've done stuff like this in the past and I will do so again if I feel like it's not worth actually playing the game. <laughs> So don't tempt me. I'm gonna do it. And there are gonna be at least a few people watching. Which I appreciate. I want to turn on the light, but that's maybe not working here, so... yeah. Let's just go for a person. Or maybe... Can I get onto this board from the other side? Something's really not working out with... Um, at least I got the light on. Some things are really not working out well with um, train collisions right now. So let's go. I actually was considering to maybe do this entire run uh, without recording. The thing is, yesterday I wanted to play some more. I had everything prepared. I wasn't really in the mood for recording. And when I tried getting this done, one of my cars just flew off the track for no apparent reason. We already passed that section, so I was really careful now that I actually get a save in before recording, or even just doing the recording, just to make sure that I can load back in if I need to. So I'm a bit paranoid about losing some cars here, and it doesn't help that I can't really see them. Weird how the engine just bogged down uh, very suddenly. So I hope that doesn't happen, but I'm very um, cautious right now. Anyways, you might as well enjoy the journey here. <laughs> or fall out of the train cam. Let's just stay in, first, in third person because that seems to be running a bit um, better. It is actually running pretty quickly now, so... Oh, look! We lost something. <sighs> Very unfortunate, but not unexpected really, so let's reload and... Yeah, that's exactly what I've been talking about. <sighs> I don't know. Okay, this one should be the latest one, so let's put it back on realistic. Realistic plus random derailing apparently. And let's get going again. Again, this is the part of the game that I absolutely hate. Because there's no reason why some of the cars should be jumping off the track while everything else is working fine. It's also the reason why I double check the brakes just then because... I mean, I'm always open to the suggestion that I'm doing something wrong, but... I can't see any obvious problem. I'm also gonna put it back to daytime now so that we can actually see what's going on. Hopefully. But yeah, it's gonna take a while to load back in because my save is massive. And I hope the game doesn't die because it did so once before. So yeah, fun times. Let me check the daytime. Yeah, it should be pretty late in the day, about to get there, so let's put it back to early morning. And reverse a full forward. Let's go. 
Second time is hopefully gonna give me the, out the outcome that I desire. But yeah, it sucks if you're trying to just do basic stuff in your game uh, or in the game and just it doesn't really work. So you might be actually watching it from more of the middle of the train just to catch the derailments earlier if they happen. And then this time around we are just going straight past the industry here instead of on the other side. Doesn't really matter too much. I mean, we are not really going that quickly. The train needs a bit of run up to actually get going. But yeah, this is very precise work with um, the loading mechanism there. With a conveyor belt. But yeah, we are finally fully off here. I also maybe wish I had a better way of handling the bridge here. I don't like just having another massive one going across. But there's not really that much that I can do about it. If we had cuts and fills, I would have really liked to fill in some of the parts, especially around the... Um, uh, what's it called over there? Let's cut the power here real quick. We don't really need to go any faster. Oh, that's already a car that almost derailed there for no apparent reason. Again, most of them just go around here without any problem, but one of them just, whoop, I almost fell off. But yeah, I would have liked to fill in the area around the... Um, uh, around the engine shed, because putting that onto... A weird extended foundation just doesn't look right. So let's just roll through here and hope that this time around nothing is going to happen. And yeah, I... I mean... If this was more predictable, if you knew uh, what you were doing wrong, if there was actually something that was like clear that you are um, at fault here, I wouldn't mind having some derailments. But they need to happen to apparent reasons. And not just randomly because, oops, I went off the switch in the wrong way or something. Because I think what happened there the um, last time, that likely the switch randomly flipped or something. That's usually what I see at um, switches and why I sometimes just have random derailments. Because for some reason in the middle of the train the whole thing just uh, decides to go the other direction. And of course the cars are not going to be happy about it. But yeah, we are going again under power and I hope that's not going to be a mistake. I mean, some of the stuff here are pretty tight. Could have maybe tried and stay a bit closer there, but uh, I mean, it's fine. Not like anything touching the wall there. <coughs> <coughs> and yeah, we should be on our way to the cattle farm now. If nothing bad happens, but this whole paranoia thing that's really making the... Um, it's making the runs much more dense than you expect to and what you want. Okay, from what I've seen there, the... Um, ah, shut this stupid thing off. Oh, look, it also broke apart right here in front. I mean... Doesn't matter anymore at that point, ah, stupid... Fuck off. Yeah, I don't know if it was this switch uh, in particular, it might have ju just been the cars being on there and the um, actual problem being up front. I don't know what happened first. I noticed that the entire train came to a momentary non-stop, but it um, had like one of those uh, twitching moments or it felt like it was either compressed or pulled apart at some point. And then cars just jumped off at 
Weirdly enough, Edward Different switches over here. One set of cars right before this one. One set of cars right at this one here and yeah. It's just annoying that so many of the journeys are how or that this is how so many of them go. And yeah, good job on this on this run. Always fun just cutting down the train until you're only delivering a single car of whatever you had in mind. I'm gonna try this another time. One more time. I hope it works out this time around, but I'm not too sure. And maybe if we go really carefully, if we go really slow, this time it might be working out. But who knows. The thing is, I would actually like to show you guys not only unloading the stuff at the cattle farm, but also then going over and doing the reloading of the seed pellets at the neighboring freight depot. But yeah. For that, anything would need to work to begin with, and that doesn't really happen right now, it seems. So, yeah. What else is new? <laughs> and I know I'm constantly giving the game shit, but I feel like that's more like a reflection of the shit that I'm getting for trying to play it, trying to enjoy it. I would like to be more positive and I just load it into the wrong safe. Doesn't matter, let's, let's just go with it. But yeah, um, I would rather not talk about bugs all the time, but that kinda would require me to not encounter bugs all the time. I'm not doing that because I like to repeat myself and because I like to just talk about unrelated stuff. It's really things that I'm constantly encountering and it's annoying as all hell. So yeah, stuff like this absolutely needs to be fixed. Doesn't really seem to get fixed, so... Yeah. I've given up on submitting bug reports a long time ago. Also, I don't need 50% compressor here. And yeah, pressure is going down now, but I think it's gonna come up rather soonish. Oh, never mind, I had this thing flip to the wrong side. Let's go into the other safe again. And yeah, I'm getting impatient. I know selecting the wrong safe and all that is my mistake here, but Jesus Christ, this should have worked the first time around. I'm not hoping that the third time around is gonna be the kind one for some reason now, where the other two failed. They really need to get their shit together. But I'm still curious um, when we're actually going to get the 1.0. According to one of the devs on Reddit, um, their internal numbering system doesn't need to be consistent with the external one. I asked a few programmer friends of mine and they say, yeah, that's um, accurate. But yeah, 1.0 can't be too much further away, and if this is what we are getting, uh, yeah. I'd like something a bit more enjoyable, to be honest, and I'd like to still have something that in the end is going to be successful. And I don't see how this could be it. Uh, let me just go over here to gameplay and they cycle off. Let's enjoy the nice setting sun over here. And yeah. See if it's going to work out the third time around.
just nice and slow. Maybe I should be using a gear engine for this just to make sure that we don't go into any dangerous speeds like 20 miles per hour. Jesus Christ. And yeah, everything else here. You're gonna have to see about it. There's another set of emergency cars outside my window. I hope you don't hear that, but uh, it just stopped anyways, thankfully. I mean the Eureka, still a pretty nice engine in my opinion. I don't like the wood texture because that's a bit too pixelated, but just looking at the overall look of it, I mean, this is cool. Very fancy. I wish we had more paint jobs for this one. We're constantly getting stuff for Montezuma and a few other select engines, but this one could really use a secondary paint job and maybe another um, few sets of uh, smokestacks. We cannot really do anything about this apart from adding um, some flex to the engine, which are completely stiff by the way. And yeah, enough power. Let it roll, let it, let it coast. Hope we survive this time around. This is so fucking ridiculous. So another thing that I was considering to do and since we are just gonna be on the road here for a while I might as well talk about it. You know how the input side of the cattle farm has... I think it starts... Um, depending on the side you are getting on on one end, you will find the platform for the um, for the straw bears. Then you're going to have a bit of a gap there. Then, in the middle, will be the um, uh, the little round trough for the water. And on the other end, there's uh, a grate for all the grain and all of that. And it's kind of spaced out in a way where you could go in there with two uh, grain cars to water cars and to um, uh, store bell cars and then unload three cars at the same time, one for each uh, type, then move along a little bit and unload the next um, set of three cars. And part of me still kind of wants to do that because that would be a really interesting and efficient way of dealing with it. The problem is, first up, we need twice as many cars for the um, water as for everything else here because we need twice as much water. So that would throw off the ratio to begin with and also we have four uh, cars for strawberries to begin with but five for grain because of different capacities. So that also doesn't work out and also the water is on a completely different train right now. So that's another little issue. So I'm not really sure if it's worth trying to figure that out. But yeah, since the water train basically comes past the wheat farm anyways, I wouldn't be against trying to include a section of a wheat farm uh, yeah, to just uh, load from one car onto the other. Just a layover station, I don't know. And integrate it into this train, but yeah, once again, Especially with us needing uh, twice as many cars for the water than for everything else. That would be kind of uh, senseless in a way because it's not really gonna work out for the entire thing. Okay, nice and slow, nice and slow. This is where it all went wrong the last time. Everything looking all right in the middle, but yeah, let's see if we can just roll through over here. I really don't like having to tiptoe around like this. I bought one of the fastest engines in the game, I should be able to use it. I laid off the track accordingly. 
But the problem really doesn't seem to be my track, at least not uh, most of the time. It's really just the switches, crossovers, and that kind of thing. So the stuff the game provides on its own that we cannot really do much about. But yeah, we are on the long straight now, so we should be good. But yeah, the whole water thing has been a whole another um, consideration on my part. I would definitely need to uh, switch out the engine at that point as well. So let's keep an eye on everything here. We might as well um, cut the power now, go a bit slower again. Really we should be going full steam ahead at this point, regulator to full, pulling back the reverser, getting a bit more speed out of it, no matter how realistic it is, but yeah, what we are doing right now is really just <laughs> I have no words. This is perfectly straight track. The last few cars are all empty, so there's not even any weight on them that could call for anything like this happening at all, not like the car got pulled apart or something. What the hell is this? I mean, the one thing I could imagine is that maybe the spline is too long. Let's check in on that. I mean, it's a decently long one, but it shouldn't be too much. It also didn't tap at any spline connection, but more like somewhere in the middle of it. And yeah, I've laid like 200 meter long splines uh, constantly. Okay, this is actually getting quite long, but I've been through this thing so many times and it worked out perfectly. There was a time where this would cause derailments, likely because the splines were ending up being too long, but I adjusted it, it worked fine and now this shit is happening. I'm sorry, this is not how I wanted this episode to go, this is not how I wanted the journey to go, but... <sighs> we are going to do this in another episode. I'm going to stop the train here, I'm not going to reload anymore because, well, um, I'm not gonna start again. I'm going to instead reassemble the train here on the main line because, well, can I do it somewhere? And the next episode we are going to be back at the cattle farm and go from there. It's frustrating to no end that I just can't have a continuous journey with um, a train going through my area. It's just constantly throwing some bullshit at me and I'm so fucking tired of it. So, yeah. I'm gonna do the rest of the re-railing job uh, off-screen, I'll be bringing back all the cars here and then we are going to continue from being back at the, um, at the cattle farm. Unloading everything over here, bringing back the empty train over to the, to the freight depot. I hope it's gonna happen without any incidents, I'm not entirely sure anymore. And then maybe, but really just maybe, we'll bring it back over to the wheat farm here. This would have all fit into one episode. I don't really have much else to show for the next one, so that will likely be a very short one. But what can I do? Anyways, that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you still enjoyed or got something out of it. <laughs> 
I got a bit of frustration out of it, which should be pretty obvious at this point. So yeah, still, thanks for watching and see you guys in my next one. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.